Welcome to another episode of Meet the Loons. This is episode five. I'm here with Ferris Colleague, a forward at St. Thomas University located in Minnesota. Ferris, good to have you here with me. Hey, it's amazing to be here. I'm glad to be here. Thank you. Perfect. So let's get right into it. Ask you a few questions about your soccer journey. First off, tell me, tell me just about your soccer journey from Bosnia all the way to America. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's, I've been playing soccer since I've been about three years old. Um, It's been a, it's been a good journey so far, you know, knock on wood, hopefully it stays like that, but it's been like any other journey. It's been hard. There's been some ups, there's been some downs, obviously. Um, But man, I mean, nothing compares to soccer over in Europe. I can tell you that much. You know what I mean? And um, no hate on American soccer, but um, it's different. That's for sure. If I can, you know, say anything, it's completely different, you know, the way they run it here, their systems. Um, But yeah, so I started playing when I was three quickly adjusted to the American system over here. Um, started out with some local clubs um, all the way until I was about probably about 12 years old, played for Blaine out in Minna, up north a little bit um, here in Minnesota, played for another like local Anoka team over there. And then um, club wise, when I, when I turned um, about 13, I went to a Andover club and that's when I met a former professional Bosnian soccer player as well. His name is Eddie Budo. Um, his family knew my family. So there's, there's some good connections there. Um, you know, we were close with him, whatnot. He took me over to white bear. Um, he created his own club. He became the president of it. Um, and then I played with him for the next about four years of my life there, all the way until I was about 19, um, before I joined college. Um, he, he honestly, if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be this good of a player. I wouldn't be where I am. I wouldn't have had the connections that I have now. So, I mean, a lot of props go to him. Um, and then while I was playing with them, I also joined Minnesota United's Academy. Uh, that was in 2020, 19 slash 20. Um, played with them, um, met a lot of amazing people there. Coaches were amazing. The players that they had were amazing. Um, played there for about a year and then COVID shut them down, which um, kind of sucked because um, I was learning a lot there. I was becoming better. Um, and then high school wise, I just played for my local Anoka high school team um, all four years um, from freshman to senior year. I was a starter all four years from freshman to senior year. So, I mean, it was, that was kind of nice, you know, but yeah, I mean, genuinely probably highlight of my journey so far has been playing with the United Academy team. They, um, they put me through everything. We took a trip out to Germany, Belgium and uh, Netherlands. Um, And we had a little tournament there right, actually right before COVID, like we came back two days before COVID hit, which was crazy because we would have been stuck in Europe um because they shut down travel and stuff but yeah so there's my journey I mean it's been and then yeah in 2020 committed here to St. Thomas to play um after reviewing all the options I had I just decided to stay home stay close to family um the deal that they gave me was you know kind of hard to beat so here I am perfect and you mentioned you played for Anoka High School you played in a lot of different youth academies and a lot of clubs in and around your area what's been the biggest difference for you when you're comparing those lower level youth systems to college soccer other than just the big physical difference obviously you're playing bigger guys what's the biggest difference in the game itself for you um i think one big one for sure is just the pace of play uh you cannot turn down or turn off for a second i mean you you turn off or like slow down for a second and you're beat you know what i mean um, so definitely the pace of play is insane at the college level. I mean, you're playing against kids that are going pro that are getting drafted to MLS. So, I mean, it, it's it's insane. Uh, that's for sure one. Um, another one is just the technical abilities that all these kids have. You know what I mean? Every kid that I play against has, like, their own technique, and it's different than any other player. So it's hard to read players, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. You know, like, you can defend against a simple youth player club, but when it comes to these college levels, I mean, like I said, there's these kids are going pro and stuff. So it's, it's definitely a lot – harder but it makes it it makes you better i guess at the same time so sure and st thomas is a team that's in in transition they transitioned from the d3 to the d1 level pretty recently actually did that kind of play a factor in your decision or was it just the fact that it was local and they offered you a good deal or did that d3 to d1 transition the ambition that the team showed did that also play a factor in your decision as well um it was it was something i thought about um growing up i always had a dream of playing division one soccer so that was the biggest factor was the fact that I did want to play division one soccer. And it wasn't for the fact that's like the name of playing, like being a D one soccer player. Sorry about that. Um, but it was just, it was honestly just the fact that um, I knew at the division one level, there's going to be way better teams and I can get a lot better playing for a division one team. And I know in the long run with my ambitions of playing 
pro soccer that division one is the best route for me. Um, the, the transition, I heard a lot about it um, when I came for my official visit and whatnot. Uh, and I've always been that player that's, or that person that's always wanted to take on challenges. Right. You know, so hearing the story about St. Thomas making that transition and, and becoming division one, and then not only is it close to home, close to family, all that also with the deal that came with it. I mean, it was kind of hard to turn down, you know what I mean? So, and I wanted to challenge, you know, I don't grow if I don't challenge myself. So decided to take it on. The club Rochester has notable Bosnian ties. Our logo has a Bosnian star in it. Did that also play a little bit of this, uh, a factor when you were making that decision to come commit to this team and sign for this team for this upcoming summer? Well, you know, it's always nice to be around Bosnians, you know, um, there's, there's nothing better about it than being around more Bosnians that actually care and know that other Bosnians are always looking to go pro. So I wouldn't say it was the only deciding factor, but it did play a little bit for sure. It's always, I feel like family when I'm around other Bosnians. So, you know. And then what are you looking forward to? What are you most excited about for this upcoming summer, joining the USL two with a new expansion team? What has you most excited Man, I'm just ready for, I'm ready for a new experience. You know, USL is pretty big, obviously. Um, just heard about a kid that was in the USL 2 and I was going over to the Premier League. So I'm just excited for an opportunity, an opportunity to show myself to the coaches that I'm going to be with and then other players around the USL League and even further out. Um, so I'm just excited for another challenge, another opportunity to kind of expand my soccer journey. For sure. So that's the first segment, just introducing ourselves and the fans to you. We'll move over to a little bit more fun segment here. Quick fire questions. You know the deal, just a, a quick one or two word response. If you want to expand, go for it. And this Let's first question, right off the bat, a little bit of a scouting question. What is your penalty tactic? Are you placement? Are you power? You go for the Panenka? You try and fake out the goalkeeper? What's what's your tactic? You know, honestly, it's, that's kind of rough. I hope none of our opponents kind of look at this, uh, <laughs> this interview between me and you because... I always go for power, but not only power. I also look for placement because I think placement is key. What is your favorite pregame meal? Ooh. If it's a late game, like a 7 p.m. game, I tend to go for a solid chicken and rice type of meal. If it's an earlier game, let's say noon, 11 a.m., whatever it is, classic egg and cheese sandwich. I mean, just like two, three eggs on the sandwich with some cheese and a banana. Banana is a must. I have a banana in my bag at all times before a game, so it doesn't matter what time it is. And what is your favorite attacking position? Are you are you more of the winger type, or do you like playing that number nine spot? Uh, see, I've always been a nine. Um, it's, <laughs> ask any Bozzi. It's, it's a natural thing. But this past season, um, they started playing me out on the right, which I love because I'm a left-footed player, um, so I can cut in, which is always good for me. But I'm going to stick stay true to the number nine position. It's got to be my favorite. Would you rather win the Champions League or win the World Cup with right. obviously Bosnia? Right. I'm gonna go World Cup. World Cup. I think that, that that'd be a cool story as well. A smaller oh. country, a country that doesn't have that international success. <laughs> yep, uh, exactly. That definitely makes sense. Yeah. And kind yeah. of going along with that, who's your favorite player, whether it's college player, whether it's uh overseas as well? Are we talking current or just ever? One of each. One of each. Okay, ever um player that got me started playing soccer and an ambition to go pro uh fernando torres currently i'm gonna go kevin de bruyne Love the and what is your favorite soccer team manchester city uh, would you rather score a goal or get an assist goal 100 goal what's your favorite thing to do that's outside of soccer you can't say like lifting or other sports completely outside of soccer cars anything to do with cars driving them looking at them going to car shows anything with cars for sure Perfect. And finally, if you want to expand on this one a little bit more as well, I think you would touch on it a little bit earlier. What's your favorite soccer memory? Um, this one actually happened last year. So with the transition to Division One, we haven't we didn't get a win till late in the season, and um, we had we were playing Omaha University of Nebraska Omaha. They came to us. We were home. Um, it was a noon o'clock game. Um, at this point of the season, we were still Owen. I think it was like Owen ten or something like that. We haven't gotten our first win pretty much. We we went close, but we just couldn't pull out a win. And um, I started against them and we uh, had a free kick in about the 10th minute. Um, and one of our midfielders plays the ball in. I get a header, get get on the end of it, score a header goal. We That put us up 1-0. And then to make it much way better, we ended the game 1-0 with a win. So I think that's got to be it. Uh, not only did I score, it was my second collegiate goal, but um, it was a game winning goal. 
And on top of that, it was our first division one win. So, I mean, it, it was an honor to be like, to have the first division one be because of my goal. So. Perfect. There you have it. That's Paris College. I'm Arnoff Pokerell, your Associate Director of Media here at Rochester Football Club. I want to thank you for joining me. Uh, thank you for watching this episode of Meet the Loons. We'll see you next time here on Meet the Loons with some more USLW, USL League 2 players. We'll see you guys in the summer of 2023. Stay tuned.